Dead with Tobacco Company Blow and Smoke Podcast. So great to see you guys back here. Today we've got a special guest. We have Mr. Brad with us in the house. How's it going, buddy? Doing just super today. Good. I don't know how to really uh, say your last name, so I'm not going to try to butcher it. <laughs> Buttruff. There we go. Brad Buttruff. There we go. Anyway, so we thought it would be a little bit interesting. We've already covered kind of what you can do in the hills, uh, but we wanted to take you back in time and give you a little bit of history of Deadwood itself. So what we are going to do here, uh, we got Brad here. He is our local history buff. Uh, amateur historian. Amateur historian. Uh, he knows yeah. more than most the actual historians, right. but we won't go down that road. Well, and just on a fucking nice slow day, he regales us with uh, you know stories of the past, and we sit there in awe as he talks. Yes. Or yes. you fall asleep. No, I mean, well, no. No. I like No, I mean, I drift stuff. off. I don't listen to the whole thing. I drift <laughs> off a little bit. <laughs> Damn. So, if you could kind of paint me a picture, Brad, what uh, what were the early days like? What was the whole beginning of Deadwood? The uh, beginning of Deadwood, in some ways, goes back well before the 1800s. I mean, there'd been... This was... Let me start with the Fort Laramie Treaty 1868, because that was critical to us here. It was um, the result of the only war the Indians ever won against us, what they sometimes call Red Cloud's War, war because he was the chief in charge of most of it. Mm -hmm. And they had, um, part of the treaty was that the Black Hills was this sacred territory to the Lakota and Cheyenne nations, and the white man would not violate it. Uh, But there was rumors for, got probably a hundred years going on about gold being here. Uh, th- that was the thing that probably drove the drive that drove people coming out here and Deadwood was part of that uh, with the news that there was gold here and I remember the, we fought the American Civil War 1861 to 1865. We had the debt from that. we had reconstruction in that time. we needed money. 1873 we have a major banking collapse. Uh, probably the worst up until the Great Depression. Congress thinks maybe we should have take a look at the Black Hills. So they end up authorizing an army expedition to come out here in 1874, the Custer Expedition. was the largest military incursion since the um, American Civil War. He had uh, 1,500 troopers, um, artillery batteries, Gatling guns, um, actually, he only had one artillery piece, but he had Gatling guns. He had all sorts of stuff, including geologists, scientists, yeah. you name it. Like, what was he expecting to encounter with all those men? I mean, obviously, it was not the peaceful time that it is now. When, when, they, <coughs> Sorry. when they wrote the 1868 <laughs> treaty, there was a provision in it for the army to be able to enter the Black Hills, ostentiously for the purpose of removing um, any prospectors, pioneers, and so on that were here. Better for them to remove them because the Indians were within their treaty rights to just plain kill these people. Gotcha. Um, and on occasion they did. Mm-hmm. Yes. But they used that as a loophole to enter the Black Hills. Now, I don't think the Indians were ever envisioning it being this small army coming in. Uh, we're confident today that the Indians were aware of the expedition why? Because the expedition was dependent on grasslands for the horses, yep. and once they came into the Black Hills on the way back, all the grass had been burned, um, which caused some problems for Custer going in and coming back. They, uh, but the, once the expedition came in here, officially they were not looking for gold. And um, as I understand it, Philip Sheridan even advised Custer that if they did find gold, that they weren't supposed to mention a word about it. So part of their scientific group, though, was a couple of miners to come with them. Uh-huh. They had miners. They had geologists. Yeah. So right. They yeah, had yeah. a handful of people. And what happened was uh, around near Custer, actually, way down. Well, French Creek. Yeah, French Creek. Thank you. South of us, obviously, mm-hmm. is when they first found gold. So like ah, anything else when you when the you, tablet of 1833 yeah, yes. yeah. when you first <laughs> find gold it's fucking game on right. and screw everybody else so right. and, it, and be, be, basically what happened yeah mm. and once they found gold now, then in the same time period you have the beginning of the, the what they call the great lakota war right. uh and to capsulate the history briefly you end up having what some people call the custer disaster uh 1876 with in the custard's battle of little bighorn yeah. was to 
we were right in the middle of our centennial in this time. And so here comes the news that the boy general, now you had to remember at that time, Custer was a hero to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, he and half of his command, five companies are annihilated. Uh, it was the 9-11 of the day. Well, then the Black Hills went from being this area that the army was trying to keep the prospectors out. Now it becomes the area where the army is trying to protect the prospectors. Mm -hmm. um, all hand, now Deadwood existed in this time, and there's actual yes. there's actual information that the the uh, Deadwood was requesting the army provide protection. 1874, 1876. 76. Yeah, 76. Yep. And um, but it, if it wasn't for Custer and what happened there, I I, I, I they would probably would have inevitably the Black Hills would have been taken over. That's one of my opinions. But with the defeat of Custer and the uh, basically us pulling the teeth on the Indians, what they had. The, the 1868 treaty was thrown out the window. Mm -hmm. uh, and by 18, 1877, the war with the Lakota was pretty much said and done. Um, and then you, the, the one thing that the army used to try to do is when they would find a prospector here, they would, they would tell them, look, you, you're lucky we found you, and it wasn't a Lakota war party that found you. Mm, right. um, but after that, no, it was a different ball game entirely. Gotcha. So I'll turn it over to Stash for a second because I know you know about the early players of Deadwood. So I was telling Ethan earlier today that I really appreciate like the Deadwood series, right. but so much shit was wrong. Um, so season one, if you follow the Deadwood series, so the very opening scene with the doc like probing some dude's cranium mm -hmm. where the bullet went through, physically part of that is true. So there is some truth in that. Um, there was a lot of stuff that was obviously glorified just to make the show. Right. Uh, Al Swearingen was a true person that was here. He did run a he did run a bar slash bordello. And by all accounts, he was one of the first. He was to put one up. of the first to actually start building here in this in this area. Yeah. He was actually kicked out, I think, um, twice, I think, before he actually came back in and was able to build up and go from there. Mm -hmm. So his place done burned down three times, not once, not twice, but three. And on the third time, he decided to bail and went up to Colorado. And then there was some other issues up there. And that's still debatable. I think it's almost been settled of where he actually, he wasn't hit by a train per se, as as the story goes. <laughs> but it was made to look like he was. Yes. Yeah. So there, there, is, there is some issue about how he died. But however, he was here. He was making at a top of... If you took today's money, he was making about twenty grand a day. Got to remember this money. was, and this was a time period where, in the case of the United States Army, a trooper made eleven dollars, either eleven or thirteen dollars a month. Right. So, a but, lot of the custard troops that did that when they came out here, uh, who was it? Was the general? I forgot who came through here to stop. It was in the series, and Terry? it was. I think it was Terry. I think you're right. That was true. Mm -hmm. Where they did come to camp out here, but Deadwood was charging so much money, they were like, yeah, we'll go camp out somewhere else. Right. And left out of here. But the problem is every time they found gold in the creeks, now this was before the hard rock mining, when they were still doing the panning and, and following the creeks up to find the, the stuff, yep. a lot of the soldiers would abandon the group to go look for gold mm -hmm. because they were making yeah, more off of it. that than they were yeah. <laughs> some of, sitting in the silver. Right. Some so. of them were actually pawning their firearms to try to get yeah. money to help them get their stuff. There stock. you go. <laughs> so, you know, uh, um, Sal Starr and uh, Seth Bullock came out here from Montana. Mm -hmm. Sal, or Sal Starr was a Jewish person. I cannot remember. Is Indiana where he came from? I think so. You know, I'm not I, I, I got to update that a little bit. I do know that Seth Star or Seth Seth Bullock, Seth Bullock was from Canada, mm -hmm. and he came down into Montana, was a sheriff there, and then he moved over here. And him and Sal Star wanted to open up a hardware store, so basically mine the miners. Right. 
So My favorite quote from that fucking series. Yeah, they yeah. were basically there to mine the miners, yep. just mm-hmm. like the Chinese, just like uh, uh, Swearingen, Swearingen, just like every other mm-hmm. swinging dick that basically came into <laughs> Deadwood that wasn't going to mine gold. And what was weird was what was one of the most popular items they brought up that sold like mad bedpans. Mm-hmm. They, the fun thing they didn't think about was taking a crap out here. So lo and behold, <laughs> here somebody brings bedpans. And they were charging them like 20 times the price they had when they got, it was. Right. For a bedpan. But it, to me, it just, it smacks of like the movie Tombstone where um, the, uh, the Earps are coming into town. Right. And you have all of these just incredible characters. You've got the sheriff. You've got the great card shark. You've got the first mayor. You've got the notorious owner of the, you know, bordellos. you got the, the famous madam. The and alien then, gunswinger. Yeah. Right. It's. Right? Also, well, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, um, Wyatt Earp did come here with mm-hmm. his brother. I think it was Virgil, I believe. Was it Virgil or the. I Morgan? Thought, Morgan. I thought it was Virgil. I think it was Virgil. I think it's Virgil. No. Or Morgan? I think it's Virgil. Whatever. <laughs> no. Him, I know Wyatt Earp showed up for six months. Basically, it came out here. Uh, Seth Bullock basically. They came down because they were known sheriffs in different towns. Yeah. And Seth Bullock sort of shut them down. So that part of the story, if you ever huh. watched the series of Deadwood, was like, yeah, you're cool to be here, but you're not going to be a sheriff and go F yourself, basically, is where that boiled out to. They were here on a lumber claim that they won a card game, I believe, in Wyoming or Montana. I can't remember exactly where, but mm. somewhere there. And they came out and they found out there were toothpicks, nothing worth and they moved on, and then they went on down to Tombstone. So oh. he was here for six months. Oh. Well, yeah, because yeah, Virgil wouldn't right get but, too farther. But they weren't here in any kind of uh, what do you want to call it? Official capacity, capacity, official yeah. capacity, right. basically, because Seth Bullock sort of shut him down. And then the biggest fallacy of the whole thing is. Wild Bill and Seth Bullock being best friends and taking to the road to make sure that they could, yeah, you know, revenge the whatever death of the pastor, right? And I think that's what was in the series, anyways. Yeah, they no, they shot a cop. They they literally shot a couple. Uh, the road agents killed a, a family. Of the oh, family, family that was made leaving it out like of it was town. The Indians. Yeah. yeah, and um, no, they never met each other. No. Actually, Seth Bullock and uh, Sal Star showed up the day or the day after, I believe it was, after Seth Bullock was physically ki- or not but, Seth Bullock, yeah. Jesus Wild Christ, Bill. Wild Bill was killed. Yeah, and, and and Hickok was only in town for about three weeks. Yeah, he was in town for three <laughs> weeks, and he put our name on the map. So thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm, I'm appreciated of that. We're so glad that you could come out here for three weeks yeah, and get your half blind off of syphilis and get yeah. killed. He's yes. one of my best neighbors now. He's always quiet. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. That's true. You live literally up the street from the cemetery. So. Oh, that's funny. He doesn't put out a whole bunch of noise, and he doesn't party too lot, and there's no boombox music, so it's no. pretty good. So. No. Uh, so, like, the whole expansion, you were talking about World War II and kind of what happened after that. <coughs> but that's what brought us over here? We're talking, like, Lewis and Clark. Well, how far back are we talking? Um, I'm going back. The real when Deadwood came into being was after the 1874 expedition when they right. found gold, um, and Deadwood was not actually it was it served the mining industry, but it wasn't really a mining town. We were like the entertainment district for a lot of the miners. They'd come here for their supplies. Uh, people like W. E. Adams and so on yep. showed up. There was a lot of people that came out here that made a lot of money not by getting the gold, but by getting money off the people who were getting the gold. Yep. And I'd say that in terms of prospectors, the vast majority of them went bust. They failed. They moved on. Yep. Um, some of them died. Um, but the ones that did do okay, um, they did really okay. And, of course, that period of time only lasted for about three years. Though what's funny is to this day, I still run into people who want to know where they can go panning for gold. Yeah. Um, Just there, pick a stream and try it. It's still around here. Yeah. It, it still leaches out, yeah. per se. But it's nowhere near what no. you would have seen. So Potato Creek Johnny, for example, <laughs> he was a little Welshman that was like four foot four, I believe. And uh, the cool story with him was uh, he had some people coming over to his cabin. Mm-hmm. 
and his wife got pissed because all they had to serve was lettuce because he was a cheapskate from hell. <laughs> so um, he was the one that supposedly found the largest nugget in the rivers out here mm. that was basically what we call freeform nuggets. So it was in the creeks. He was panning and found this. So there's a whole lot of skepticism, skepticism of whether skepticism. I like skepticism. skepticism. Yeah. That's putting it lightly. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it was a real nugget or he melted a bunch of stuff together to make it set nugget. Oh. It is down at the Adams House Museum. If you want to go see it, it is a free tour. It's a donation only, and it sits right center of as soon as you walk in the door. It's waiting on some like Mission Impossible style heist to right. go on. Yeah, um, but it is a. Uh, so he was here, and him and Deadwood Dick and a bunch of other people. Deadwood Dick used to write dime store novels. So yep. I'm getting a little bit ahead of where we were yep. at. But yep, yep, yep. the fact is he wrote a whole lot of dime store novels. His cabin is up near the lodge now, mm -hmm. as we call it, the Deadwood Lodge up at the top of the hill. And uh, when he, uh, he passed, uh, obviously they all went away, and the stories remain, but... It's sort of one of those, yeah, take it with a grain of salt, whether that was a real nugget or he melted it together. So it's one of those right. sort of like uh, <clears throat> sort of like uh, Bill Hickok's death chair. Right. We Is that there or not? Yeah. We should not forget that lush Calamity, I mean, Calamity Jane. Oh, yes. yes. Calamity Jane was a big character here. Yeah. She was... She rode in with Seth Bullock, and they never met each other before they showed up in Wyoming, before they got with Charlie Utter, mm -hmm. who did bring them all down here together. Another real character from the series. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And Charlie Utter was a character in himself, but uh, Calamity Jane was, and I've heard stories, and I've heard uh, things about, she obviously outlived Wild Bill. Mm hmm and then Charlie Utter went down to South America, turned into supposedly a dentist or a doctor, and then we don't really know what happened to him after that, per se. Hung out with Butch Cassidy and Sundance. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But um, she would come back. She did actually a picture with the sandstone carving or the limestone carving of wild bill mm -hmm. before it was taken down and a bronze statue was put in because people kept stealing pieces of it yep. and eventually broke it down to where there was nothing left of it so part of it is still on display here but most of it got carried away um she passed away in what town was that do you remember not right off right. the bat. I know it wasn't until we're like a 1901 or something. Yeah, she was 1901, 1902, somewhere in there when mm -hmm. she passed away. And her one of her things was, I want to be buried next to Wild Bill. As a joke, mm. they literally buried her next oh, to no Wild shit. Bill just Hickok. Joke. Yes. So that's where the whole rumor of her infatuation, <sighs> right. lifelong infatuation with him. And she used to, I've, I've, heard, I've heard stories of previous people that lived back here back in the early 1900s talking about she'd come out in the street and hooting and hollering and shooting off her guns and she was a very unique individual mm. she did everything from prostitution to singing dancing was a uh, cattle driver mm -hmm. did uh, um, scouting for a lot of the people and she was actually on the according to her now i don't know what the proof is of this but according to her she was on part of that tour is <laughs> brad's like what I, oh God. so you you can take it from there brad no she, that's <laughs> just what i've read you're you're more the historian than i am but there's go a, with it she's an interesting character because <laughs> recently they discovered records that indicate that she worked at what was called it was a bordello outside of um, fort laramie the right. army post there called the hog ranch and apparently she did a turn there. Now, what was interesting about the Hog Ranch in the history of prostitution, which I'm not going to um, digress too much, but... Um, That's but, a whole we'll long history yeah. here. Yeah, but th th that was a place... The, the ar Army troopers were not the choice clientele for a lot of these ladies. And the fact that she was working there was usually because it was the last people that she could get any... Um, to come drop a dollar bill on her. Right. Um, <laughs> Probably more than that. 
Yeah, back uh, then. Yeah, yeah right. nah. She wasn't exactly a looker. No, so. no, None of them were. No, 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 yeah, no. None of the pictures no. that I've seen were. No. There's one picture of her in a dress that actually... Oh, when like, she's standing by Wild Bill's... It's my understanding no, it wasn't even her no, dress. I mean, um, it probably wasn't. Yeah. No. She liked to wear mule skins and, yeah. and, and more manly stuff back at that time. Yeah. So. so to feed my curiosity, I mean, so the history of the Black Hills goes back farther, way fucking farther than that. When the uh, French fur trappers were here in the early, you know, 18 aught four, whatever, uh, all the way up to like my favorite story in history is Hugh Glass. Um, they got mauled by the bear up by Lemon, which is about two and a half hours north of us if you're driving 60 miles an hour not riding a carriage. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, the stories that all surround that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, like he got mauled in 1823. So Fort right. Kiowa was already up uh, where Chamberlain and Oakoma are right now. Um, he crawled, what was it, fuck, 300 miles or something like that from <laughs> Lemon, South Dakota, all the way down to <laughs> Chamberlain. Yeah. Just to be able to get better so he could get out and get revenge on the guys that left him for dead, right? We've all seen The Revenant. It's a horrible movie. Please don't see it. Read the book instead. <laughs> um, just because, oh my God, it does not look anything yeah, like no, it out there. It's, it's, but uh, So you got that at, at uh, 1823. Glass dies in 1833, same time the Theon uh, tablets were discovered. Ah, the so, Theon tablets. Yeah, so that's why I think that, you know, just because... The gold didn't start, and the and the the prospecting didn't start until you know officially eighteen seventy four whatever. That way back then there had to have been whispers going along you know oh, yeah. along the trails to the fur trappers and all these other guys uh, to actually have said stone. You know, all of us dead. Indians took our gold. Yada yada yada. I'm the only one to survive. That was the whole reason why the the seventy four expedition was. At that time, the United States government was probably willing to look for money anywhere. But here you, you hear about this mysterious area, the Black Hills, and it was. It was largely a mystery to us. Um, and when they put Custer's expedition in there, it was they had no idea what they were going to run into. Mm -hmm. um, as it comes to pass, Custer did encounter some Indians there, 27 of them, mm -hmm. um, ended up taking one of them hostage briefly, and the others um, were able to skedaddle away at night. Uh, which actually caused Custer a certain amount of concern because he was wondering if they were going to bring back somebody to visit with him. Right. Um, he Go get have, the rest of the war party. Yeah, the, yeah. Well, two years later, he got that opportunity. Well, right. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Serve to him. Yeah. <laughs> but Oops. even today, when we were kind of looking into the backstory, that the map that's up there, I thought was fascinating because, it, you know, you're just you're trying to rehearse your American history, and <clears throat> the, uh, right, you got Indian tribes here. Then you've got a bunch of French fur trappers who are coming through, right? Briefly. Probably from top and bottom, yeah, really. Briefly. Yeah. And, and then you have the Lewis and Clark's expedition right up to the center of the state, right? Mm -hmm. Up the Missouri. So in, in some ways, yeah. you've you're, you got the largest land deal in history for $11 million, Louisiana Purchase, which the only reason why the French thought that they had is because they had fur trappers dropping plates right in the middle of nowhere. And then you've got... Um, <laughs> Brad's like this is so oversimplified, the, 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 <laughs> right? But uh, my whole point is that like the territories in How some ways opening, <laughs> Lewis and Clark open this thing up, and then you've got like you said these these guys going out to the Black Hills uh, over r rumors of getting rich, something like that. That's pretty much in a, <laughs> in a really in a in really a, shitty nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean that fucker's cracked on every corner, <laughs> yeah. but yes, <laughs> eighteen different shells taped together to yes. look like one. Right. Yeah, I mean, you bring up the Louisiana Purchase. I have to bite my tongue because that's one of the more convoluted pieces of history. That I mean, the French sold it to us because they knew they were going to lose it one way or another. Right. Um, kind of like you getting a car you got a used car sitting out there and you figure it's going to break down and it's going to be no good to me but i can give 50 bucks this guy will give me for it <laughs> yeah so um, you go yep yeah. yeah yeah that's what you're saying but he's going to get 75 dollars on you know scrap hey, hey, hey was um the the french got some money out of it but when you stop and look at where they were in the world at the time i'm absolutely certain they were thinking oh we're gonna lose this anyhow yep. so let's sell it to these americans let's you know? flip it and make a buck yeah yeah, yeah i just like when Welcome we were to the economy today, yeah. <laughs> let's flip it and make a buck. When we were looking into it and just how deep the history goes, like just like the uh, the Sioux only owning the hills from the Arikara for a hundred years previous to us getting out here, you know, to 
you know, Arikara had it from 1500 or something like that to 1776. And then Kiowa. And then Kiowa. And, and, yeah, there, but, there's a whole shit yeah, slew of Cheyenne them that and, went yeah. through. And, and Lakota Nation was basically a... Um, I, uh, they they ran on a basis of conquest. Mm-hmm. To them, using force was not only un, nothing unusual. They it was their standard operating procedure. Correct. They would drive tribes in front of them. Uh, sometimes they would even go in, destroy a village of another tribe to give make set an example for them. Uh, so they the idea of massacres and so on. Now that was standard operating procedure. The problem they had when they ran into the Western expansion, when they ran into the army and the settlers. Uh, their reaction to the settlers was violent, um, which only fed the animosity, and the the army was more systematic. You have to remember who was in charge of it, Sherman, Sheridan. These were guys that during the American Civil War ended up waging total warfare against the South. Yeah. And then here it is with the Indians. They eventually discovered the Indians had an Achilles heel, the mm-hmm. buffalo. Yeah. Um, and it, but they also found there was a profit center in slaughtering the buffalo. So, um, it just was, for pelts alone, not for meat. Oh yeah, it was, no, like, they they literally would. Uh, if you go just outside of here, about 15, 20 miles away, you, there's a cliff that they used to run the mm-hmm. buffalo off of. Yeah. The Indians would do that. Yes. Buffalo jump. Yep. Yep. Buffalo jump right there, but. That was for them to get everything. So mm-hmm. Native Americans, I'll give them to credit, they they took everything. Right. There right? Was, they used everything. Then, then in our case, there was a huge market in the east for buffalo pelt. You couldn't yep. even believe it. And then yep. They, yep. So they would they would literally, we would uh, dance us with wolves. If you want to go down that road, that part of the story. Yeah, I know. <laughs> He's over there like, oh, not God, not necessarily a true story, but, up, but nothing against Kevin Costner. <laughs> <but> that, <laughs> not I the liked, personal Kev. I yeah. liked Waterworld better. Yeah, um, <laughs> so did I. Oh, if that would have came out like ten years later, it would have been a fucking great movie, and it would have done excellent. Right. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Mm. I like I like Waterworld. I like Waterworld actually too. Pretty good. Postman wasn't bad. Yeah, yeah, right. And if you're going to watch anyway. Dance with the Wolves, I'm sorry, this is the last I'll say, but but watch the extended version. It explains so much fucking more. It explains why they abandoned their fucking caves. It explains the whole crazy, batshit crazy general that shoots himself in the head as he's riding. It just explains a lot more. Go and watch it again. It's only anyway. four and a half hours. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> You guys watch Netflix and chill anyway, so yeah. what the fuck's four and a half hours yeah. of your life, you'll get over it. So, um, anyway. <laughs> But, I mean, the, the point being is, is this was one of the last barely eh, close to it of the Wild West towns that finally settled down. And that's the really thing. It, it settled down in the face, but it didn't settle down no, in the town. It never did. Now, I don't know if either one of you can answer this, but why is Deadwood, Lead, Central City, the three that survived out of the whatever, you know, hundred different little settlements, Pluma and, and, and I don't know the names of Central the City. The Homestake. Yeah. Homestake area. So Homestake, the homestake was, the, was what? Yeah. I mean, when you read about how the Homestake mine developed, get remember, this was the most badass mine in North America. Because that was way back in fucking 1878 yeah. when yeah. they started. But And it kept operating right into the uh, current century. Into 20, 20, 2012, I thought. 20, no. 20, 20, 20, 2003, 2002, 2003 is yeah, when it, right there, it shut down. I mean, we're talking about fucking centuries here. Give me a decade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no big deal. We're talking, we're, off a little yeah, bit. Right. we're talking they took over 40 million <clears throat> ounces of gold out of that thing. Yeah. Um, crazy 8,700 foot deep below where we're sitting right now in mile and a half correct yeah pretty much yeah. if you want to do that I kind mean, of math but whatever um part of that too is george hurst now he was a big figure out here in town too but the person in, not to interrupt no go ahead phoebe hurst Yes. George wasn't here that long. Phoebe right. was here. Phoebe was here for quite a while. And, and she did stuff for this area, which I mean, it's largely forgotten. Right. And, um, so I'm, if you're part of that Deadwood series where Hearst becomes this evil guy that pays people to shoot other people, hmm. that uh, you're stretching a loose. that look out there quite He wasn't a bit. even here that long. No, he wasn't. He was here like three weeks and left. Yeah. <laughs> He basically he did come in. He bought out 
pretty much everybody's claim and had it checked. And if it didn't come out to anything, he's like, all right, cool. Here's your money. Uh, fucking later, <laughs> you know, didn't care. And he figured out where it was coming from. So you got to remember Hearst came from the newspaper barons back in the day over mm-hmm. in, I think, San Francisco and, and out that way. Rosebud. Yes. So when he came out this way, he also did Virginia City, Nevada. He did uh, in Montana out there. I think it was Virginia City. Was it Virginia City, Montana? Or yeah. Yep. So those were both big, huge silver mines. Mm-hmm. When he came out this way, he already had a reputation of basically buying everybody out. So there was a negative thing about him, Mm -hmm. but he had the manpower, the money, and everything else. He could get the Welsh in here to actually do the digging because the Welsh were mostly the people that did the mining. They were the ones that came over and knew how to mine. And uh, and then the other thing he did is after he got them here, he had to keep them here. That's where you see Phoebe again. The the, the school system, libraries. The library raid down Deadwood. That was one fabulous yeah the, it in and, and she treated her employees relatively well now mm-hmm. when milk created the deadwood series he needed a villain so he made hearst into it um and some of the stuff he portrays in there the the his use of the pinkertons yes the pinkertons were all over the west um you could make a television they did make a television series about them um but the way they painted it up like this dark a pop apocalyptic character coming in right. um it was completely off yeah yeah it wasn't near what it was and yes was he a businessman of course he was right. did he have the smell for gold as they say <laughs> yes he did he found silver in virginia city he found silver in nevada and he found gold here so yeah i'd say he knew what the hell he was doing regardless of his background right well i mean he let the other people find gold and then got right. the rights to it. Yeah, but Phoebe, 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 Phoebe. thank you, Phoebe, 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 whatever. It's this English <laughs> pint that's messing yeah. me up. Anyway, it's got to be that. So yeah, he, uh, she put in a lot of the stuff. The the uh, the art museum or the shit, it's not the art museum. It's the playhouse up in Leed. Um, a lot of stuff that happened down here was all because of her. So they had a huge general store up there for the employees to go to. That was all because of her. And right. it wasn't like your proverbial company stores that they had at that time. Right. They were not trying to exploit exploit the miners. They they were making plenty of money off the gold. They didn't need right. to exploit the miners. Yep. Hmm. Um, so let's kind of reel it back and then do a little bit of a timeline. So 1876 is when everything started to kick off here. Fucking yes. people coming here, things going crazy. There was how many? Like 10,000 people? Some I've, say 30, some say 10. I've heard a lot. I, I, I've never heard a, a good number fixed. It wasn't like they were doing a, a, yeah, a, like a, a, a census. census every census, time. Yeah. Yeah. We're Come down get, off the mountain, fill this piece of paper up. Yeah, they were basically, we're, we're guessing around in the area. Now that includes... Deadwood, Gayville, Central City, Leed, Galena, all Galena, those. all the little tools around here, mm-hmm. uh, Nugget City, all them were probably around ten grand, okay. roughly, but pretty spread out. Not, not no, literally people wasn't. stacking tents in the fucking middle of Deadwood. And- no, well, they were mining in the middle of Main Street. Yep, so right, and that's just kinda, to let you know, kind of where I was getting at before right. the first fire. The Gulch ran down Main Street and off to. Wall, right? Right where we're at. It ran off, yeah, towards the visitor center and back down. Because Deadwood Creek and uh, Whitewood Creek would come together through Deadwood it proper. Right. And now it runs. That was roughly down Main Street, correct? It's down just on the four lane. Okay, okay, okay. So on the four lane, just beyond Main Street now. But Deadwood Creek itself used to run right down Main Street. Yeah. And then Whitewood would meet up with it about where the visitor center is now, and they would become Whitewood Creek as it goes on the way. So, and then the first big fire was 1879, right? Yep, and that demolished everything, much everything. all of Main Street and all of downtown. And then, and then the big rebuild, obviously. Yeah, um, and that's where not the buildings that we have today. That was after the 1889, 94, 94, yep, 94 okay. fire. 
But the main street of Deadwood, or the I'm sorry, the main main uh, floor of Deadwood would have been um, like the basement where we're at. Yes, would have been the original. That would have been street level back street in level. the day. So basically, it was a bunch of fires collapse, fire collapse, yes. fire collapse, and we build. just build on top of the shit. So flood, we had a flood. Too. Yeah, we oh, had yeah. a big flood in what eighteen eighty two, I think two that wiped out pretty much everything. So part of it is uh, we just did a dig. So anything you do in Deadwood mm-hmm. area, uh, we had a parking lot that was capped off back in the seventies, I believe it was. And was never messed with since then. We knew there was stuff under it. We just didn't dig it because it was capped off the parking lot. Mm-hmm. Well, the hotel wanted to come in and expand and build a huge hotel. Right. And we're like, okay, but you got to pay this money for an archaeological expedition to come in, dig a trench 75 foot long, X number deep. And as we went down there, we found a long tom from the flood. Mm-hmm. So a long tom is a great big, huge sluice, basically. They got wiped out in the flood. Uh, we found some Chinese coins. We some, some found some American coins. We found a lot of glass artifacts, so a basket, and some other things. So when they're setting this up and they're like, oh, you want to build here? Well, this is the old plans of Deadwood, and this was what was here? Or is that any right. fucking where in Deadwood? Anywhere in Deadwood that you want to do any kind of... Bleh, when you start digging down, if they have not done any kind of excavation. archaeological excavation prior to... Mm-hmm. You have to have an archaeological. And so basically, the company is going to build whatever quote hotel right. slash whatever has to be there. So back when Cadillac Jacks was built, they had to move a house that was there. We knew that was Chinese, where the Chinese used to live. Right. And they dug down and found, uh, what, Jesus, it was close to 5,000 Chinese coins. Wow. Uh, hey, some wow. still in the straps with the, the leather strap that has all the coins on them. Because Chinese the, coins have holes in them. We had the second largest Chinese community in North America outside of San Francisco. Yep. And they started coming damn near when the fucking town was... Yeah. yeah. Yes. They they were here to mine the miners. They did the laundry. They did all the And they had interesting shit that they did with the laundry. Correct? Yes. Oh, yeah. There was a... <laughs> so, one of our cigars, Deadwood Chasing the Dragon mm-hmm. cigars. So, Midnight Oil, Zero, and Anti are all named after basically heroin or... Opium. Opium, opium. Yeah. in that yeah. case. Yep. It was so, a legal product at that it, time. At that time, it was a legal product. Right. We have tunnels that run underneath our town still today. They are unfortunately closed down due to the fact that there's a lot of work that has to be done. And some of the stuff's, you know, you don't want somebody going down there to brick falling on their head. Right. Well, but, and proprietary. I mean, yeah. they run right through people's basements. Right. So there is a lot of that running around. But that was how our dragon came about. It was sort of homage to the Chinese that were here. So they were here to mine the miners. They used to do the laundry. But they would never basically dump the wash water out. They would keep it, and then they would turn around and screen it, Mm -hmm. or basically sluice it, or look for gold, pan it for gold. Because miners, when they came back from the creeks, where they came back from everywhere else, they'd turn their pants in to get washed. Yep. And they would wash them, and they would look for the gold dust that got caught in their pants. So they were not stupid. Fucking crafty, man. Yeah, they were crafty. super smart That's people. That's fucking awesome. They did most of the cooking for almost everybody in town, mm-hmm. for the most part. So there was a lot of stuff the Chinese did. They had their own separate little town at the south end. Well, southeast, I guess it is, part of town. And... Uh, they had their own religions. They had their own things. And when when somebody passed away, mm-hmm. so in ancient Chinese rituals, they basically would cremate them and they would send them back to their hometown wherever they died. Mm-hmm. Well, some of them, we didn't know who the hell they were when they died. They were actually interned. They were cremated as per they were supposed to be. But we didn't know where to send them, so they were actually up interned in Mount Moriah Cemetery right now. So, And Mount Moriah is kind of a unique place for the middle of South Dakota in the biggest <laughs> outlaw area as they have sections for different 
Yes. Uh, cultural, you know. Yes. Whatever. Yep. Because uh, they have the, I don't know, they have a huge Jewish section. I know that. They have the yep. Chinese section. They have. They have a section for smallpox kids that passed away during the small cat, smallpox. Basically a mass grave. Yeah. There. It's, yeah. It's, and then, then there was another mass grave for a boarding house that caught on fire that killed, uh, what was it? I it remember was, some number like 17. It was up there around yeah. 17, 20 people that yeah. died. They could not recognize, you know, they couldn't obviously identify the remains. So they buried them in a mass grave there. There is a marker for that, and that's where they're buried. Now, you got to remember the cemetery was moved. Yeah. So while Bill Hickok was up, dug up and physically moved to the current location, it was Potter's Farm that sold off the land for them to move the cemetery because the town was expanding. Mm-hmm. We didn't quite get everybody. <laughs> Just for, for the record, my current day home is where that old cemetery was. And he, it, yeah. And it wasn't that many years ago when two doors away they found a body while they were doing um, work on the retaining walls. Yep, yep. And, and um, it was on PBS, so if you ever want to go see that, it's the, uh, what is it? The Deadwood Pioneer. Deadwood Pioneer. So you can look that up on <laughs> South Dakota PBS. It will pop up. It's about an hour long. It's a very entertaining because they tried to physically figure out where this guy came from. We don't know who the hell he was. Though there was some stuff around that so. that was interesting because the guy had advanced dental work. Yes. Um, something that wouldn't have been common unless he had been in England or someplace like right. that. Oh, okay. Or even far east in that time frame. So he had gold foil, which was very rare. So he came from family of money when he had dental work done, but somehow ended up here, ended up dying. Hmm. And they buried him. His little cross <laughs> got wiped out, and somehow we dug him up. In 2000, what was that, 2017, 18, it, somewhere It was only a, f- a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, it wasn't that long. Because I remember when they found his body, and it was a, a big deal. You should have seen the circus they hand around Oh, yeah. That. Oh, I bet. Um, so we'll go through the fire, the fire, the fire, the flood. <laughs> yeah, right? pretty much. Okay. And then when current town Deadwood right now, because we are a historical site to the whole fucking town, mm-hmm. um, when that was rebuilt was, you know, late uh, 18, 1894, 1894 yep. which is on a lot of the plate markers around town if you're looking at the buildings. Um, so when they started that, I mean, how did they uh, continually advance the the gambling, the Old West? The I, Like I know, like Hearst was trying to make this more of a civilized place or they were trying to put on the civilized show. But at the same time, you always had that dirt in the background. Now, what's interesting was, that the, boy, you're getting into a favorite topic of mine. Now, if you, <laughs> if you come out here yeah, and you, <laughs> you, you, if one thing I should mention, because this is going to tie into it, right. we've got a museum now, the Deadwood Bravel. It yep. is, I finally, after all these this time, last that Saturday, my wife and I, Went which, by it. the way, I need to make mention, today oh. is my 19th wedding anniversary. Oh, happy Congratulations. anniversary, man. 19 oh, years yeah. with Lori. Congratulations. And, and nice. six previous years of living in sin. Nice. Um, Hell good yeah. enough. I which, like that. A good intro to the whole yeah, section. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But Came to spend the time with us. Yes. <laughs> after the fire. Don't kill her. Don't have her kill me. Yeah. I'm just saying. She'll put a contract out on me. I know it. No, I don't let her own a gun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're good. She did want to learn. Um, well, let's not go there. Yeah, let's, uh, yeah. No. <clears throat> but they, after 1894, I find it interesting. We finally decided to start rebuilding with brick. Probably after the town burns down twice, it had numerous and other you know, fires. Yeah. yeah. And brick doesn't burn it quite as quick. Yeah. <laughs> it, one of the first people to invest in building here, believe it or not, was the Salvation Army. Um, I think they wanted to come out here, set up one of their barracks, as they called them, and they were going to try to um, reform the town. They, they weren't here a year. They gave up. Um, <laughs> Just like about everybody else. So. Yeah, but anyway. That same space ended up becoming bordello space, which I find incredibly ironic. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And then we were historic in that we had we had women working the trade here from 1876 on. Though at that time right. when they started, they were using tents. Um, eventually, they started setting up regular buildings for it. One of the interesting sidelights of history was that one of the preferred buildings that a lot of um, 
prostitutes used you could buy from a Sears and Roebuck catalog. Yep. Um, yep. And then they started establishing these. Uh, well, they had bordellos right from seventy six and seventy seven on. Uh, but once they got set up on the second story operations, which was a type of prostitution particular to the Old West, um, second story girls, uh, and we had that here right over the top of, um, now over the top of the current location of Deadwood Tobacco, we had a hotel. Right. We know that girls work the hotel. The Fairmont Hotel. Yep. Yep. But then going um, north along Maine, they had four major bordellos at that time. Now, there may have been other smaller operations. There may have been girls that worked the saloons, though we do know that if you were an independent and you came into a saloon to try to solicit, the girls that actually were there as regulars, sometimes there would be altercations as they would eject the one girl. They, um, actually, there was a one time that they had them swearing they were going to have a gunfight in Main Street and even put stuff in the Black Hills Pioneer about it. Uh, it was <laughs> it was great for the local bars because they oh, actually right. gave a date and time and people came flooding into them to be able right. hear ye, hear ye. welcome yeah. to the gunfight okay well yeah. the the bordellos yeah the bordellos in Deadwood would do that it was the best advertising they had was if they could create some cock and bull story mm-hmm. um, like they had one that they were claiming they were going to have a race. A naked race down Main Street. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and it would fill the bars. The bars, the saloons had no problem with it. This is great. No. They will. They only fed the. You know the. It would. It developed into a, a great form of advertising, and um, it was a good time for them. So, I mean, for a town that was literally built off of you know debauchery. Well, first off, gold. So greed. Yes. Uh, debauchery. Yes. Uh, a little bit of gambling, a little bit of, you know, this, that, and the other, a little hanky panky. I mean, it literally lasted forever. I mean, like, even even today. And how long did the opium trade last in Deadwood? Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, that had to have been. It was, well, the, eventually the Chinese community moved out of here pretty much in mass. Right. Um, but I, I have seen evidence that there was still opium being traded here. It was. It was still, if I if I recall right, it was still a legal product even after they took off, and um, it wasn't until uh, things like heroin and so on. We kind of forget that these were originally heroin was actually developed uh, developed as a painkiller during right. the American Civil right. War. Yep. Um, but they were legal for the longest time. Um, a lot with laudium, or laudium, laudium, yeah. That was another big one. That mm-hmm. And that was another thing David Milk in the Deadwood series took maybe too much advantage of. Though. Yeah. What's funny today is that almost every time they do an archaeological dig here, they're finding laudanum bottles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was such was, a common... Yeah, it was like Coca-Cola is finding a Coca-Cola well, can mean, nowadays or it's like, whatever. It's like Klonopin anymore, right? It's, yeah. the, it's the housewife's... You know, right. numbing agent. Yeah. You, you keep it quiet, have a Xanax and yeah. some wine and be happy. Right. <laughs> right. One of the things that I've always wondered about, and I found a little evidence of it, was during the American Civil War, we had a lot of soldiers that were treated with uh, painkillers comparable to laudanum. Mm-hmm. Well, these same guys later, the war is done, they're out of work, um, they're looking for opportunity, they brought their habits with them. Um, right. They didn't necessarily come to Deadwood and get seduced by our, our vile ways. They brought plenty of vile ways with them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we were just more tolerant than some places. Right. Uh, well, we already knew the shadows to lurk in to get away with it. Right. I mean, and that lasted. So prostitution, like in the in the, in the the heyday, kind of dwindled down, but still was around for quite some time. It was, I don't know if I'd even say it dwindled down that much. It was still busy, just quietly yeah. busy. <laughs> There's a, um, to have a whole town keep the hush-hush vibe <laughs> is <laughs> fucking insane. Kept it for a lot longer well, uh, than yeah. most people would think. Yeah. <laughs> well, you look at, there was a period of time here, the, um, the bordellos that they had down on Main Street. When the softball, le- the the kids softball leagues needed new uniforms, the Bordellos bought them. Deadwood yeah. needed a fire truck at one time. They uh, bought them. They bought them. <laughs> um, and and yeah. the other thing was the local bars. You came in. You said you were looking for some entertainment. Sometimes they would give you a token. Well, that token would be collected by the girls. And basically, oh, this came was from so and so. Um, they everybody was tied into it. It was a 
big money yeah, bringer for it was it wasn't just a little hush hush in the corner in one building it, no, was, it was the whole town, town hush hush. Right. Right. yeah and and then there were times that it would get shut down yeah. um there was a period in the 1950s where they had a raid and they pretty much shut down the operations but within six weeks every single one of them was back right. um <laughs> yeah. and, and in the case of um raids now there's a book put out Put out called Raiding Deadwood's Badlands. So if you're looking for it, it's by an author. He's a former uh, South Dakota prosecuting attorney but named Michael Trump, no relation to the president. If you're looking for one book currently about the vices of Deadwood, pick that one up. But one of the things he talks about in the book there is how they would stage a raid on um, one of the illegal casinos, in particular the one that they brought up was one that was at the current day bodega. It was the right. bodega then too. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and what, when they would stage a raid, they would deliberately stage it so that law enforcement officers were coming in the front door, but the back door, there'd be nobody there. So all of the patrons would be heading out that way. They confiscated all of the roulette wheels, all these other nifty items they had, and they're hauling them up to where the current day dump is, and they're going to burn them. And they had the then mayor of Deadwood there proclaiming about how they were doing this. Well, there was a carpenter in Deadwood that was already making equipment to replace it with. <laughs> and, yeah. and sometimes in as little as 24 hours, they would be back in operation. Back in operation. Nothing ever stopped. So the gambling didn't really go away either. No, neither one did. I mean, it was, really. a, it was a backdoor operation, obviously, and, and right. you know, knock three times before you come in type of deal. Right. Um, but making it legal was what saved the town after the prostitution had officially been yeah. nixed, which right. was in eighty nine. Eighty nine. Eighty nine is when they finally the feds raided. Eighty was when they did the well, raid. Eighty is when they did the raid and closed what was it, Pam's Purple Door, I believe. Four it was. establishments, yeah, yeah, the Shasta Room and all Yeah. So there's a guy that lives down the street from and he goes, Yeah, my dad used to own a oil change place down below and above there was a bordello. See, while you're getting your oil changed, you can go up and get your oil yeah, changed right. upstairs. A little so, lube and lube. Yeah, yeah. A little <laughs> lube and lube going on. <laughs> one of my... You know, so... Uh, one of, it was interesting. Yeah, one of my <laughs> 10 years here working in gaming, I was able to make the uh, friendship of a guy who used to have a um, jewelry store here back in the time of Pam's Purple Door and whatnot. He was telling me one time... Uh, this guy's in his 90s now, but he's telling mm-hmm. me about how the girls would come there. They were always well-dressed. They were always polite. They would always come in a group. They on- yeah. they would buy top-end stuff, yep. and they would only pay in cash. Yes. And uh, and he missed them. He was talking about how he missed that those days. And They did parades. Yeah. I mean, they literally were in the parades in town, like like he was saying. They... they Gave a fire, you know, they got up the money to get a fire truck right. for dead. I mean, there was a ton well, of it, and it finally ended in what year was it, Brad? It was in um, 1980. They did yeah. the, that, was when, and I have done my research there, and I find that the whole story about why the federal government raided them there's something there that doesn't ring true because it was a, this murder of a um, federal judge in Texas that allegedly they thought the Banditos Motorcycle Club had done because he was in charge of an investigation involving them. He gets shot to death. Then the government, the federal government, was claiming the gun had been removed and brought to Pam's Purple Purple Door. Door. And I kept thinking, I've met Banditos. They're not that dumb. Yeah, Um, no. They're going to dump that shit in a creek, a swamp, or yeah. the fucking it, river somewhere on the not, Within five hours, yeah, not they're, fucking 24 hours. Yeah, they're not going to do that. And it's not so. like they need the gun. I mean, right. every one of these I met, they were all fucking fucking... Ar- I'm, they were they were well prepared for the circumstances. Yes. There, we yeah, there we go. Good, yeah, good switch good, up. Good cover. <laughs> but, yeah, and that's, that's uh, you know, so gold... Stopped getting produced here in 2002 when the mine finally shut down. Mm-hmm. And it's not that they ran out of gold. No, it's it they couldn't go much deeper. Well, yeah, it was the cost of bringing it right. up against what was at that time the market price. Right. Which, if I remember right, it was like $300 an ounce then. Because believe yeah. it or not, I worked in a jewelry factory around that time. Yeah, well. There you um, go. Well, actually, I worked in a jewelry factory some years before that. But, Man of um, mystery. Hmm. Many like different it. mysteries. Boy, if they would have waited though, because it's up to eighteen hundred oh, now. Yeah, well, it's 
There's been talk of that coming back, but they are at 8,700 feet, I believe, is the depth of the mine currently. Now mm-hmm. flooded up to about the 5,500 level. Yeah. It's my so. understanding also that there are other stakes out here yet that might be lucrative. Yes. But the home stake was the king of them all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That was the big boy, and uh, she produced gold for multiple years so lead at the time was the money maker right so lead was the money maker deadwood was actually physically dying they were going away they had the sears robux in town they had the little ma pa lube and go gas stations right. and woolworths and one of the shit like that one of the funny things was and i can't remember there was a clothing store in deadwood the average person, the average woman in Deadwood could not afford to close there. The girls in the bordellos could. They basically right. kept those things floated. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, it, I mean, there's this eternal between Lead and Deadwood, like, uh, I'm prosperous, I'm prosperous, I'm well, prosperous, I'm prosperous. that's exactly what happened. And when Deadwood finally got the go-ahead for the initial gambling permits... Mm-hmm. So we're not a Native American. We're not. We fall under the same exact rules that Vegas and Atlantic City do. We're not Native American. A lot of people that come in our store, mm-hmm. you know, is where we're talking cigars. Right. A lot of people going, oh, I thought that was Native. No. We fall under the same exact, I think, Cripple Creek, us, uh, Vegas, Atlantic City, and there's like two or three others that physically fall under the federal laws of gambling there, because of the historic nature there's of it. An interesting sidebar to that. When Vegas, when the uh, mob was starting to set up right. gambling operations in Vegas, Bugsy Moran, yep. um, they came to Deadwood to find people to give them, to teach them the actual nuts and bolts of operating a casino. And I actually have a picture I found showing what were supposed to be two citizens of Deadwood standing with none other than a lucky Luciano. Oh, Uh, wow. um, And so we had our fingers into that. We we were providing them technical expertise. I mean, we'd been doing it for God only knows how long. And matter of fact, it's my understanding. That was, remember, my brief tenure in gaming. Correct. Um... These were back the old mechanical one arm bandits. Right. Um, and there's still some of them in Deadwood to this day. It's yeah. my understanding today they don't want to use them. But they come there to are three I know of because I search them out because I'm still a fan of the old school. Put a dollar in and you pull the handle, yep. and if you get something back, it goes clink, 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 right. and you get change. Yeah. The uh, uh, shit. The one across the street from us, like Kitty Corn to us, uh, Bullock Hotel yeah. is one. Yeah. There's a, I think there's one left over at the, let me think a minute, over by the, the nickel, uh, over, yeah, Iron Horse Hotel slash that area. Yep. I think there's one there still left. So there are a couple left that still have the old one arm, true one arm bandits that oh, give out change. No. There's people that collect but, those things. I'm yeah. amazed at what people put money into, but it's. And then now today, uh, the gambling equipment we have today is like one step from a video game. Yeah, um, right. absolutely. Well, I mean, you're, you're, uh, everybody's uh, uh, attention span is just fucking rotten anymore, obviously. I can't even think of the word. That's how good mine is. Um, <laughs> And I, I, I would love to go on about this forever. Um, we got to wrap but, it up. Yeah, right. We got to wrap it up just a little, in, in a little bit. But uh, like going back to all these, the one thing that I thought was funny when I'm trying to do my little research that I do today um, before the podcast is you can search and search and search, but there is only a handful, maybe four or five pictures that I found. Not that I did extensive research. Obviously um, not. Of all, yeah, of all <laughs> these, uh, of all these mad are the a madams, b working girls, of of Deadwood, and um, let's just say that you really wanted to have something done if you wanted to have something done. 
they were they were some rough looking bitches is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I was trying to put it there lightly, oh, but no, I wouldn't. You know, I've seen pictures back then. Back then, not maybe well, Calamity the, Jane wasn't exactly something you want to jump out no. and go to. But well, and there's this what, the only if other, you've been out panning gold for like six days right. and you come into town and, yeah, yeah. a little bit of dust and prison, you're like, yeah. prison rules I get it and I'll take got, it <laughs> you gotta remember that it, it, the best ratio in this town was three men for every woman mm-hmm. at times it was eight or ten men for every right. woman you didn't have a lot of choice no um, I, I'm not saying I'm not I'm not digging them for doing what they did with those ladies <laughs> I'm just saying by today's standards the one picture of that this is the rough looking about, lady yeah, the rough-looking lady that's yeah. sitting on the Shea Lounge that's just like, Ooh. I'll eat anything, put it in. You know? I just... Uh, that's yeah. 300 pounds of loving, baby. It get is. on that. It is. It is. It, and I'm sure she had her tricks. Yes. Don't get me wrong. And, and I'm, to make matters worse... <laughs> Sorry. It, to make matters worse, one yeah. of the technological innovations they had that was used in Deadwood as well as what they called the half-sheet they would have a bed sheet that would be what the young lady involved or sometimes older lady involved would be laying on, but it would be sewn to a chunk of leather, a large leather sheet, so this guy wouldn't even take his pants off. He'd mm. come in, yeah. drop them, do his business with him on the leather, her on that, and they'd be lined up. Um, and sometimes they would have a, a guy there that his job was basically to make sure that the guy didn't abuse the girl, but it was right. also kind of to help swab things out and let's get ready for the next one. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> a little pump and play. They were, yeah. only, they were only lucky that in 1871, Vaseline was invented. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> shit, right? <clears throat> it could have been bad. It could have been. I mean, they had condoms used to put in a little tin because I found several of them around here. You literally washed them out and reused them. I mean, once you turn it inside out, it's reusable, right? Yeah, <laughs> sure. After that, it's not your problem. No, but it was, it was yeah, no. That's a, yeah. Oh, God. And that was back when they were using sheep intestines. Yes, for, and, right, um, right, yeah. <laughs> so, it, the last part of this whole shit show we're doing right now <laughs> is what all these, what all, what do the all these series have in common? <laughs> Stories. Yeah, stories. What, Whatever. I mean, what I was taking stories, away from it. Series, yeah. stories. I, I can't fucking read whatever. <laughs> no, no matter how regulated Deadwood is and no matter how, you know, how far we've come <laughs> away from the debauchery, it's still a place where you can come and redefine your, yourself. Yeah. My, my whole thing was back in the day, you know, in the Wild West and why I'm so infatuated with the, the history of the Wild West is because, you know, if you had a shit go of luck at a certain place... Basically, what you did, get up, move on. You could change your fucking name. You could change your fucking backstory. You could yep. change every fucking thing about you and start a new life. I mean, how many how many uh, uh, lawmen were not lawmen but really criminals in the past that right. came and redefined themselves because they knew the ins and outs of crimes? Hey, I know how to catch these guys because I used to do the same shit, but I'm not going to say that, yada, yada, yada. Well, in the case of some of them, I think that they didn't even stop there. It was just they put a badge on. Um, but they were sometimes regulating crime in a given area just to the benefit of some particular party. Right. So Wild Bill, for example, right? Mm-hmm. He's what put us on the map. The fucker wasn't here but no. two and a half, three weeks and got his ass shot. No. But he knew his eyesight was going. Yep. He was a gunslinger from other areas. Yep. And he actually shot one of his deputies by accident yep. and that fucked him up because of the because man. of the failing because eyesight. of part of that yeah and he came down here he physically wrote his wife a letter now if you watch the deadwood series mm-hmm. this is part of the true part of that he did write his wife a letter saying look i don't think i'm gonna get out of here alive now he came down here for gold panning right but he was more gambling and that side of the world. He right. was never part of that. He he wasn't manual labor person. No. He was a showman. And the day he right. the day he died, he was breaking a, one of the cardinal rules, rules of gunfire. He Here he is sitting in a chair with his back exposed to a doorway. Yep. Yeah. And um, he never did that. Yep. Ever did that. Now the whole part about the whole fact that he gave uh, Jack McCall the night before a dollar coin so he could go eat. 
eh, if you want to play it that way, I mean, sure. There's a whole lot of those little tiny stories that are murky. But the, right. This was a time in history where if you killed a known gunfighter, you were you were making gone. your you were making your name. Yeah. yeah. Um, so here you've got a loser like Jack McCall from all accounts. He manages to kill um, Wild, Wild Bill Hickok, Bill, which was one of the best gunslingers in the West. Yep. Maybe period. the best. The know? best, actually. Well, and he got in the world. He got away with it the first time when he had the trial. Yep. And then the second because trial was when the trial here was not official because we were not a sovereign right. state, basically. They mm-hmm. have not Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, we weren't incorporated yet. We but, weren't incorporated yet. So he got off because he got a lawyer that said, Oh, you shot my brother in fucking Texas <laughs> somewhere yeah. or some dumb shit. And he got off. He did not get very far no. before he got caught no. and then hung in uh, Yankton. Uh, Yankton at the yep. time. Yes, it, 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 Bill was popular in his own way, yes, even for the was. short time he was here. Hmm. Not somebody else would have put a bullet in McCall if he'd hung around. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, that's back, that's back when, I mean, the whole notoriety, that's going to be your superstars back then. That was the Buffalo Bill Cody, you know. Right. Well, he actually show. worked for yeah. yeah Buffalo Bill and was out in New York doing the stupid uh, Fucking hated showtime it shit. The and Wild he West. hated it. Yeah. He, Wild, Wild Bill Hickok hated yeah. that. He actually brought a gun in. That had actual bullets in it when he wasn't yeah. supposed to. And he and was, was cocked sh- most of the time. Yeah, cocked most of the time. And he was shooting into the ceiling. Mm-hmm. And the guys freaked out. And he's like, I'm done with this shit. Yeah. And he went back out west again yeah. where he belonged. But that era of time was ending. Yeah. So the wild, wild west was sort of converting to more modern It was getting times. civilized. It was getting civilized, <laughs> yes, thank you. And uh, he was not part of that. He did not want to be part of that. His eyesight was failing, yep. and that's when he ended up here, and he wrote his wife and physically said, look, I don't think I'm going to get out of this town alive. Yeah. And, well, he, and didn't, I, he didn't lie. I feel like the backstory is he just married her to bankroll himself so he could go out gambling. I mean, she was the, she was the, uh, whatever descendant of, uh, or not a descendant, but active person in the, in the circus industry. She right? was in the circus industry. Yes. Yeah. So she was a big circus person. So there was some money back in there, mm. but in the end he was a gambler slash gunslinger. Yep. He was never here to, he, he came out here to look for gold. Right. He was never going to put a pan in the fucking water. Let's no. just be honest. Right. He, he used to make money doing um, basically shows where he demonstrated his marksmanship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He would shoot apples, shoot yeah. all kinds of crazy shit. Yeah. He, then, was, he then, was good. Then his eyesight starts going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the writing, he knew the writing was on the wall. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, and I mean, live by the gun, die by the gun. Yep. And that's what happened to him. Yeah. So, in an end. I mean, we could go. We could go on for hours, yeah. Brad. I hope you can come back soon and uh, do this again. Um, thank you for coming on and, and giving us your your expertise. Your, you know, what did you say? I'm the amateur historian. Amateur, amateur historian. Amateur there are historian. regular historians in this town that can tell you stuff I would never even know. About. I know, but we don't like them as much as we like you. <laughs> um, as always, make sure to like us on Facebook, like us on Instagram, like us on Twitter. <laughs> Do we have a tweeter? We have a tweeter. Yeah. We don't use it, but we have a tweeter. Uh, you can go ahead and make sure that uh, we uh, jump onto the website, uh, give Diana some action, uh, put some oh, orders yeah. in. She loves to do the Cracker Jack, so if you get a box or more, you're going to be a Cracker Jack prize in there. Um, not everything specific, but you're going to have a little bit of a treat in there. So make sure you go on to DeadwoodTobacco.com, order all your favorite cigars from us. Uh, if you have any questions, give us a call, 605-722-1510. Thank you again for tuning in guys we will see you in the next podcast enjoy peace peace